Hi, welcome to this week's edition of On Tap, presented by FCSI of the Americas. I'm Wade Kaler, Executive Director. On Tap this week is a woman who tells incredible stories through her designs, and I've been told is an amazing wine connoisseur. So we're going to find out more about that in a little bit. Her participation in food service related associations, when you look her up, reads like the alphabet twice. She's heavily involved in everything she does, definitely puts in the effort. Please welcome the managing principal of Web Food Service Design, Miss Gina Brenniger. Gina, welcome. Oh, thanks, Wade. Great to see you today. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate the time. Um, you know, this whole series has been a lot of fun so far, and, and we're really just kind of getting to know our consultant members and, and getting the word out about what you guys do. But it's really, as much as it's about the business, it's really just getting to know you a little more personally. Just tell me a little bit about your background. How did you get started as a food service consultant? You know, what, what kind of specialties do you or segments do you specialize in or, or what is your niche in the market? Well, I'm probably more of an unconventional start. I guess we all are, though, since there's not really a straight path to being a consultant. True. But um, I kind of grew up in restaurants. Um, I'm half Italian. My grandparents had a pizzeria. Aunt and uncle had a pizzeria. Another aunt and uncle had a restaurant. My best friends down the street were Italian. I mean, this is all in Southern California. <laughs> it's strange, I know. Um, but they had a restaurant. So we all worked there. And... Um, when I was in high school, my parents actually bought an international house of pancakes. And so we all worked there. Um, so started out in food service in a very interesting way as a child and um, actually came to web. Um, my mom and I um, owned a bookkeeping service and we, we did all the accounting for Jim Webb and he kept begging me to come to work for him. And um so as my kids were getting older and I needed to have um, a little bit more of a stable type of position because I had 65 bookkeeping clients at the time and wow. I was all over the place, um, I started working for Jim part-time because the office was really close to um, their school and um, did a lot of, lot of, lot of different work for him and then started doing business development and marketing and um, he would sit and talk through designs with me. He actually did it a little bit with my son, who's now 26, um, and just kind of learned everything by osmosis. So I've just been around restaurants and food my whole life. Wow. One of the, you're, you're another one of those that no matter what you try to do, you can never get away from it. You get sucked right back into it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so at web, exactly. what do you specialize in as, or, or is you multifaceted to everything or do you specialize in certain areas of the industry? Um, well, I do most of the business development. So that's okay. why I have all these alphabet organizations <laughs> that I have. are a blast. I love it. Um, so I'm more overseeing, I'm running the company. I'm overseeing all of business development, um, the operations, the financial piece. Um, I probably just get in there enough to mess it up, just like most other principals do. So, um, you know, I, I've had a lot of fun with a lot of different clients, you know, going on interviews and just staying at the high level at more at the beginning of a project. I don't really get into the details with it unless I need to. Nice. Well, speaking of projects, what, what is one of the projects that you and Webb have done that you're most proud of? Um, was a couple like great clients that we have. Um, so one is Ralph Brennan's restaurant group and we have never really been able to finish anything with them because they've been doing a lot of downtown Disney. And of course, everyone knows where Disney is right now, but, um, they're just great clients and I've done a lot of research with them and had, they've had us in New Orleans for tastings and we've toured different restaurants and hotels and just working on concepts with them. And they're just a great client. And then I'd say the other one is we did we did two dining hall renovations at Cal State Long Beach, which is my alma mater. Nice. So I interviewed on four of the five teams for that project. Um, so it was very personal to me. And then just stayed in the project, you know, the whole way. And just to see the whole transformation of the two dining halls on campus, which were done at separate times. So they, okay. they didn't obviously at the same time. But we interviewed for both of them together. It kind of came as a package. So that was just really cool to be able to see like the transformation of a dining hall that was built like in the 60s. 
come into, you know, the decade and it was my school. So it was just great. If you want to talk about why people get into this industry, you mentioned you were with the Brennans and you had to go down to New Orleans to do testing or tastings. <laughs> That's a rough life when you have to join the Brennan yeah. family and be in New Orleans at their restaurants to taste what they serve. That's a, a great example of why you get into the hospitality industry. Ralph Brennan is just so humble and such a nice man. And you're part of his family when you're working with him. And it's just, it just becomes part of you. It's just part of who you are. And it, it's just, you have an invested stake in what happens with the project. And it's just such a great relationship. That's, that's amazing. That's, that's fantastic. Who, who's been your greatest influence in your professional life as you've, gone from bookkeeping to running a food service <laughs> consulting firm? Um, I'd have to really say my mom, which um, I know sounds strange. Actually, when we owned the International House of Pancakes, we had my parents had done it as an investment and they ended up hiring a manager that just took a ton of money from them. And so my mom actually went up to Sherman Oaks, which is not close to here, you know, an hour and a half away, did all the training. Um, learned how to cook, ran the restaurant. She cooked, she waited on tables. Um, I actually bust tables. My dad would just like run the register, but she has such a strong work ethic. And no matter what adversity comes her way, she finds something else to do. So starting her bookkeeping service, she had been um, assistant controller for St. John Knits. And they came to her and said, we need to let either you or the controller go. And the controller was a man she had brought into the company that was older than her. And she just said, well, I'll go. And then she ended up, you know, starting her business. And then she and I built the business wow. up together. And so it's just, she just is resilient. And yeah. she will do whatever she can to, to make the best of a situation. And yeah. it's it, great. Well, that's a very selfless thing to do too. So obviously your mom's an amazing lady because you don't just give up your job because you feel like it. It's something you really have to believe in. So that's, that's, a, that's a great influence on you then. What is one thing about Gina that nobody would ever guess? What is a, a hobby or an interest or something along those lines that nobody would ever know about? I don't know. I feel like I tell a lot of people this, but maybe not. I don't know if you know this, but I was actually a synchronized swimmer for nine years. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe that's why I like to dance. I don't know. Cause everybody's going to say that I dance all the time. Right? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was a synchronized swimmer for nine years and I, um, was in Orange County, California. So we were the top team in Southern California. And then actually at Cal State Long Beach, I asked them if I could compete for the school in solo, which really you're not synchronized, but you're synchronized to music. And so I actually went and competed at University of Michigan and got fifth place in the um, NCAA championships, which nice. isn't like a big deal, except for, you know, I mean, I did it. Um, uh, it's, they can only have one person per school compete. So but I did it that's, and it was fun. That's very cool. That's a great idea. Um, what's one piece of advice you'd give to anyone thinking of becoming a food service consultant? Well, I think once you get in, you don't get out. You gotta, <laughs> um, I agree. It, it, it's a great industry. I'm, I think that young people have a hard time even in, in any type of design because it changes so much and you know, I think you just have to be flexible and just know that you're working with people and the people in this industry are amazing, but you have to be flexible and just stick with it. And it's always fun no matter what. Um, and everybody likes food and everybody communes around food. And so it's just a wonderful industry to be in. I, I agree. I can't wait till we could all get back to communing around food as well. That'd be um, someday, obviously down the road, but we'll, we'll get there eventually. What is the one thing most Midwest and East Coast consultants don't understand about the West Coast food service scene? Well, I would say a couple things. Like in education, we have um, DSA, the Department of State Architecture, mm -hmm. and going through that approval process is quite grueling. And once you figure it out, it's okay. But if you've never had to do it before, mm -hmm. it's a problem. And then in healthcare, we have OSHPOD. And we've actually had to help projects that were started by East Coast consultants that didn't really understand how to go through OSHPOD. 
have so many seismic regulations in California due to earthquakes mm -hmm. and everything. So DSA and Oshpod both have a lot of that in there. And so there's just a lot more regulations. I mean, California is a crazy place. It's beautiful, but we have a lot of regulations and a lot of hoops we have to jump through and a lot of different health departments. And yeah. every department, as every consultant knows, is a little gray, <laughs> but um, it's, <laughs> it's there's just more regulatory issues. Yeah. I'm sure every state has their own, but I think with the seismic, it gets a little challenging. I bet. Yeah. I, I, well, health department is the one thing I hear from everybody always, but I, I don't know many consultants that speak highly of health departments, but they also know <laughs> that it's a necessary evil at times where you, you're going to have to work with them and some are much better than others. Um, and I'm sure it's that way in California, but as somebody that lives in the Midwest and grew up in the Midwest, even I've heard the horror stories about the California groups. So I, I can only yeah. imagine what you guys have to go through in the health to get through that in the health areas. Um, do you have a personal or professional mantra that you live by? Is there, is there a, a motto or words that you live by or you like to abide by? Well, I have kind of like my personal, I guess it's kind of like my personal mission statement. I have it on my board on the wall and it um, is basically to inspire a community of continual growth. And That's good. What I mean by that is not necessarily growing the company, but growing my people. And if they happen to outgrow our firm and there's not another position for them, you know, good for them if they can go somewhere and grow. I mean, I we really aspire to having our people learning and growing on a continual basis. So yeah. I really like to just inspire people so they are able to do that. That's fantastic. And and I agree with you as a small business owner myself. I, I the same thing. Nothing makes me happier than to see somebody that has outgrown my company. If I can't do it, I'm I'm the their biggest cheerleader for them to find the next step for them. That's what I want for them. Um, we always know that most people we hire are not gonna be with us forever. The only one that's gonna be with us forever as a small business owner is ourselves. So and we can't leave. So <laughs> we're stuck with what we've got. So it, it, I agree with you that hundred percent. Well, that's all the questions I've got for today. I, I really appreciate the time you've spent with me. Um, before you go, though, I do like to have a little bit of fun at the end of our interviews. So I've created a speed round that I like to go through with you. And so when I say these next set of lines or words, I just want you to tell me the first thing that comes to mind. You game with that? Sure. All right, Let's perfect. <laughs> what do you think of when I say scope creep? Uh, dollars. What about RFP? Um, exciting. Holding spec. Um, that's what we want. Favorite cocktail. Uh, I'm a red wine girl. Uh, I can't let you go on that one. You got to be a little more specific. Um, so I, um, I know you're a wine connoisseur too. So what kind of, you say red wine, that's a very, very broad brush right there. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more. Which one? Um, wow. Well, oh, I'm going to tell you a story. You don't want a story. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Tell me a story. We're good. Um, so during COVID, we've been doing a lot of virtual wine tasting because we can't leave and go anywhere. So <laughs> actually a lot of um, new wines that I really like. But um, I'm primarily either Napa or Paso wines, red wine. So like Durgich Hills, Cabernet was a great one that we had. Um, the Prisoner is always a great wine. Um, Austin Hope, uh, Cabernet. Um, we did a Camus wine tasting in the Wagner family and the Wagner family has a lot of different wineries I never knew about. So the Camus, of course, Cab is wonderful. Yeah. So, is that enough for you? That's Absolutely. And I'll trust me, our viewers are never going to complain when they're given wine recommendations. That'll be that people will love that. All right. So keep going here. Well, uh, would you rather cook in or order takeout? Uh, cook in. Favorite curse word? <laughs> can't say it <laughs> sure you can we'll bleep it uh, out yeah we we'll probably i probably say shit more than anything but i probably right. f word more way too much <laughs> I'll, I'll ask uh some of my other uh guests coming up uh in the future that are good friends of yours see what what word you use the most um what's your favorite junk food oh uh, chocolate nice karaoke or lip sync Oh, karaoke's fun. Why not? Favorite type of music then? Well, I like anything you can dance to. But I mean, as far as like 
normal, like not normal, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> something with a beat, not like ballroom dancing or anything. So, I mean, I'm probably in the top 40 a lot of the times or, you know, cause I go to, I was going to concerts a lot with my daughter when before nice. COVID. So texting or talking on the phone. Mm, depends on the person. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Favorite holiday. Christmas. Double dipping when it comes to food. Yes or no? No. Cake or pie? Cake. Toilet paper over the roll or under the roll? Over. <laughs> Very good. And then the last one is what comes to mind when I say FCSI? Uh, fun people. Very good. Well, thanks again, Gina. So tell me, how can people find out more about you and more about Web Food Service Design? Well, we um, have a wonderful new website that will be launching in the next couple of weeks. Nice. Um, but um, it's webfsd.com is our um, website. And we are in Anaheim, California. So um, we, we're on Instagram. We're not a lot, but probably more just on the website. And um you can give us a call. We're actually working in the office, most of us. Okay. Even though it's so we're around Perfect. and uh, we're just working. Away. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Gina, for joining us. It's been fun talking to you. I, I always love talking to you and I just appreciate the time you took out of your day to join us and tell us a little bit more about who you are. Thank you. It was fun. That wraps up another edition of On Tap presented by FCSI The Americas. If you enjoyed today's episode, Help us spread the word, like, or subscribe to our YouTube page. Check back next week when we interview another FCSI member. Until then, cheers.